for Sunday, September 9th, you found the Georgia Gang. Topping our agenda this morning, there is a deadlock in the race for governor. At Atlanta City Hall, you're iced out if you're illegal. And the mayor wants a public safety director. Some of the stories up for grabs on the Georgia Gang. From the Fox 5 studios, the Georgia Gang starts now. And we'll begin this week straight away with politics because there was a, a poll by the AJC that says the governor's race is deadlocked. Uh, I'm somewhat surprised, not terribly surprised, but somewhat surprised. Uh, Theron, I'll start with you. Uh, surprise? Demographics in it that, that uh, surprise you in any way? I'm not surprised at all. I think that this is a huge boost for the Abrams campaign because for you to be tied um, with a Republican nominee in a red state like Georgia that has for a long time been considered a uh, Republican stronghold and Politico just deemed this race as a quote unquote toss up, uh, it shows that her message is resonating. Now, Brian Kemp, on the other hand, you've seen sort of him pivot to the middle. Uh, he's definitely a more softer message, and I think he's got his wife uh, with a nice ad out. But I think that the one thing that really struck me in this poll, which I'm going to be very paying very close attention to is that there's not many undecideds. I think it was roughly six, eight around, eight yeah, around 7.6 percent eight is undecideds. And so both candidates have done a remarkable job of motivating their base. The other thing that when I really looked into the cross tabs of the poll is how unpopular um, President Trump is now. He's had a almost 10 percent decline from where he was uh, two months ago. And so I think the Kemp campaign has got to walk this delicate balance of how close they want to be aligned to an unpopular president right now. He mostly Georgia. mentions Nathan Deal, I've noticed. <laughs> yes. Phil, do you agree with Theron's analysis? Uh, somewhat. Um, I don't like, um, when I looked at the cross tabs, I don't like what I saw that it was 60 percent on cell phones and I think that's a huge flaw. I'm a proud UGA alum. Uh, it was done by the UGA Center. They're fairly new at this polling but you all of us know that a lot of folks aren't going to take calls from strangers for more than a minute and uh, I think that's a flaw in the poll. Uh, other pollsters say that. Yeah, but do they have any choice, Phil? Yes, right. there's other ways not to get too deep in the weeds. Online um, polling is where you get on <coughs> and actually answer a questionnaire is far more accurate. You've got landline polling, of course, but landlines, as we know, are disappearing. This is the same problem, and, and you look at Real Clear Politics, which has different numbers for Georgia. I know you follow this very mm -hmm. closely. Uh, Trump's popularity is, is up. It's not picking up. Uh, rural voters, it's not picking up millennials, <laughs> and so I, I think exactly. that um, I, I think well, I, I think the polling is off. These polls have been so wrong in recent years, uh, well. uh, most of them, not all, but I think this is a grain of salt. Now, when we have this discussion in mid-October, uh, <laughs> let's see what happens, and of course, we'll have our own Fox Five Opinion Savvy poll. Yeah. Well, Alexis, are you surprised? Uh, no, yes and no, but no, because this is the the campaign that Stacey Abrams has wanted to run and has been running. That's the strategy that she used. It's a very effective campaign. Absolutely, and she's been doing, has uh, campaign offices around the state. She's like all those Democratic nuts, but she just doesn't use their words. She's for all the stuff they're for, but she doesn't <laughs> use their words. But I, don't, I wouldn't call the Democratic nuts. I mean, she's she's a she's running a progressive campaign, but she's focused on education, Medicaid expansion, and jobs. Medicaid expansion, Medicare for all, free college tuition, and she for oh, she, oh, she's schools. only for free technical technical school. schools. Right. You see, it's all the same Bernie Sanders message. No, it's but not. But it's delivered very. It's tailored exactly to Georgia, and it's polling very well. If you look at the rest of the. Well, even, even you admit it's a risky strategy, and we could talk strategy yes. for a minute because as you point out there and Brian Kemp is rightly pivoting to the center. The center are where the votes are and that's how this election will be won. I think <coughs> Brian can pivot far more effectively to the center than Stacey Abrams because of what Dick's talking about. Well, All of this big spending, yeah, big that's taxes. That's the branding that the right wing talking points have put on her which is not at all what she's doing. No, but, but let me be clear. Stacey Abrams has, hasn't had to really pivot to the right. middle because since she has won this primary which she dominated, she's come out with Georgia specific issues and all 
also right. what she did that was really a good issue is that Medicaid expansion, majority of people want in that. Georgia want Medicaid expansion. But the it one thing- It me, by the way. Except, thing, but, but, except but, when they find out the price but, tag is billions of dollars, then the poll numbers change. Yeah, but Republicans have shown us in Washington they don't have a problem with spending. But other thing I want to compliment this, uh, this organization at UGA, which they did a, a, an exact sample size. So for a long time, a lot of Republicans would always say that, oh my God, you're oversampling African Americans. There's no way that African American turnout is going to be 35 plus. It was exactly what we saw four years ago. That sample size of this poll was 28. No, it was 28.7 percent African American. So now Republicans can't say, oh, Stacey Abrams has gotten this huge boost because this poll has been manipulated with a uh, unrealistic sample size of African Americans. I, I, I want to make the prediction that the star of the campaign might be, just might be, Marty Kemp. Hmm. Very effective commercial for Brian Kemp through his wife, Marty. Uh, she looks like she ought to be anchoring a news broadcast. I mean, she's, <laughs> she's poised, she's attractive, uh, and she's softening nice the image of, she's <laughs> taking away from the image of Brian Kemp with his shotgun, shotgun and, and his pickup truck. Well, and that's a very good point. And, and also, he's got some wonderful daughters. Uh, he is putting them on TV and at appearances. Because uh, if you do look at a weak spot for the Republicans, it, uh, it could be suburban women. And so I think this is a great counter to that. Now, I, well, after, even though I've critiqued the UGA poll, and I think it's flawed, and I do think Brian Kemp <laughs> maybe up a little bit. I do think it'll be a very close race in November. I think that the Democrat base is energized, but on the other hand, I think that energizes the Republicans, and that's why uh, we've got uh, Vice President Pence coming yeah. in here. I think you'll see some energy, really, yeah. on both sides. The, the, the one Absolutely. thing that I keep hearing from Republicans all across the state, I heard it before this poll came out, and I heard it a lot afterwards, is that they are having a problem trying to consolidate their base. The poll shows that uh, Brian Kemp is not doing well with suburban college educated women who are the disaffected. The 6th Congressional District. Right. And from Buckhead on up north will so, decide this race. That's, so that's a difference. If Republican women yeah. vote for Stacey Abrams, it's over for Brian Kemp. But, but yeah. the other thing that Republicans are having right now, which Democrats historically have had a challenge with, is enthusiasm. There are not a lot of Republicans enthused about this governor's it's race. And I think Phil Brian and others know that. Mm -hmm. But the Democrats, nationally and locally, are definitely enthused Especially about Stacey Well, I, I do right. think the Republicans <laughs> Yes. I think it's been slower to consolidate. I'll, I'll give you that one. But I think there is a lot of enthusiasm. I go to Republican meetings all over the state. And I think they realize, just like the Democrats do, the stakes are very high, whether it's this crazy yeah. spending that Abrams wants to do or whether it's, it's left-wing judges that, that she would appoint. Uh, I think that, um, again, we'll have a great conversation in mid-October when uh, the <coughs> absentee well, balance... I want to, uh, before we lose this segment, there is an outrage in the race. It's an absolute outrage. Stacey Abrams went to Yale, right? Yes. She has a commercial. It's called Abuser. Yes. It accuses Brian Kemp of not policing a massage therapist. Following on Cagle's attack on and him. And it has, yeah, exactly. It's not new. Mm -hmm. And it has the worst grammatical error I could imagine. And How could a Yale graduate what is it? misuse who and whom? Oh. She knows better than that. Of course. I am outraged. It grates on my... She went to Yale. Indeed, but she didn't do the commercial. Huh? The Democratic Party is responsible for that. Sure, proofread them. Come on. <laughs> well, Dick, let's not. Let's not. That's a great spin. Um, but this this ad, which they put a lot of money behind, uh, really highlighted an issue that Casey Cagle, we just made sure for our viewers, brought up during the primary campaign. So while it's not new, it's amplified in a different way. And I think yeah. it, and it definitely sort of makes people question, um, do we need more oversight? And people who clearly got their license reinstated mm -hmm. and did this, you know, this horrific uh, Well, it's uh, still crime. a distortion. I mean, uh, and it's been said over and over again by those who believe in the facts and the truth that he had no uh, oversight over the license. So the whole thing is, is again, it's, it's his, to fire up the base and make him look bad. He has a but responsibility it's, it's, for licensing these uh, professionals. Yes, but, but the rest of the story is not being told, and that's politics, but uh, I, I think they'll well, have to get, get off that one. before it's done. <laughs> uh, anyway, Mike Pence coming, uh, is it Monday? Thursday. Thursday, okay, right. well, whatever day I want to see Trump. Is. Well, bring Trump oh, he'll down. be there. He'll be here. Bring him on down. If he's, will, if he's so popular, Obama. right? Bring him Trump's that's coming. Yeah, okay, he's coming. He's coming. All right, y'all will be there. Write that down. He won't be North American, but he's coming. All right. He, he won by five points in the state uh, in November 2016. I don't, I don't think, think that, that much has now. changed. No, nope. well, I right. think it has a lot has changed. No, I don't we'll think see. so. 
depends on that sex district. Depends <laughs> on women in that Republican Absolutely. wedge of the pie that goes sort of up Georgia 400. I really think that's where it's going <clears> to <throat> be. All right, when we return, uh, Phil is uh, taking his blood pressure medicine. Uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms has kicked ice out of our jail. Stay with us. Have a question or comment for the Georgia gang? Visit their website at fox5atlanta.com. And don't forget to join our very feisty group on Facebook. And we are on YouTube when we're there. Right? <laughs> right. We try to get there. That's right. So uh, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms is having a, a really, I, we've said it many times on the broadcast, she's trying to govern, create new initiatives, but she's always sort of overshadowed by the uh, uh, revelations or shenanigans in the uh, Kasim Reed administration. But this week, she took center stage herself and she declared that the Atlanta Detention Center, the city jail, will evict the last five uh, detainees by the Immigration and Customs Enforcement people. And she put it pretty straightforwardly. Yep. Atlanta will no longer be complicit in a policy that intentionally inflicts misery on a vulnerable population without giving any thought to the horrific fallout. Now to my ear, that is nothing but declaring Atlanta a sanctuary city. Phil, you're on the State Immigration Control Board. Uh, I'm sure your teeth were grating when you heard that announcement. Well, everybody's teeth ought to be, be grating because uh, it's just a feel-good uh, thing that's not going to help Atlanta, and it's very disappointing to see what she did. What does ICE do, Immigration's Customs and Enforcement? It actually, aside from getting rid of criminal uh, illegal immigrants, it, it, it deals with sex trafficking, drug trafficking, which, as we know, I don't care what your politics are, this is a huge problem in metro Atlanta. And so she's slowly tried to get rid of these uh, ICE detainee prisoners. Uh, it's actually hurting the families. Uh, the liberals are always bleeding about uh, family separation. These prisoners will now be going down to South Georgia, which th their attorneys now have to drive down and their families now have to drive down to kingdom come who knows where. Yeah. Um, I think you're still going to have ICE raids here and um, it, it, they're still going to be going after people, but it's just, uh, it, it's just a feel-good thing that really, no. with, with murders up and with shootings up in Atlanta, that's, she ought to be concentrating it's on that. It's a moneymaker, though. You know, well, they, if, some of the counties, have, DeKalb in particular, $78 a day for the, has, has she, made it a revenue source. Yes, and that's not a good thing, because you shouldn't make money off people's misery like that. Criminals? Criminals? I'm talking about the family separation, the policy that the federal government has put in place has been not well thought out, not well implemented, and has separated families that are still trying to be put back together. And that, of course, went on under Obama, but now it's being well, fixed? It, it is being fixed, okay. or it's not being fixed. It's being fixed to make it even more horrible. Darren, I, I think this was a big boost for the campaign of Brian Kemp. He's mm -hmm. softened his approach to this issue of illegal immigration. He's mm -hmm. definitely softened it. Yeah. In fact, his latest ad says, and I really like the way it's phrased, uh, we want to reward legal, not illegal behavior. Everybody knows what he's talking about. He just doesn't have a shotgun and a pickup. <laughs> and I think with uh, this move by Keisha Lance Bottoms, the people who for whom immigration is the number one issue, and that's a lot. No, it's not. Illegal this immigration. Latest poll, it's not a lot. No, it's de way de down de the list. Democrats are just as upset with illegal immigration as Republicans. All but the I'm polling shows it, that. It's their jobs the, that they the do. Of course. Well, well, the well, poll two things I want to point out quickly, because um, Phil left this out, is this was not some feel good sort of initiative by the mayor. This is something that she deeply cared about. And what you just heard in that sound bite is that she reiterated that she did not want to be complicit to a federal policy that many of whom feel that it's, it's just the law. No, I get this. But even okay, the president on, himself, the Dick and Phil, walked back some of the uh, detainee practices that he administered. But other thing that she did that didn't get a lot of uh, press, and I want to say it on this show, is that she is going to work with uh, regionally with the city and other organizations to make sure that these detainees and their families have the legal assistance they need to try to have a pathway towards citizenship and better life. And big shout out to Uber. Uber has stepped in and basically said they're going to give free rides to these detainees and their families. To the border? To, <laughs> no, not to the border. But to, Boy, but, that'd be but, big. but, but so to help them get around to make sure that if they have to go to South Georgia and other places in North Georgia, we have some other state uh, facilities that will house them and really make 
make sure that the conditions are appropriate to treat these people as human beings and, and who they are. And, and Theron, isn't this a sad commentary? You just said it. Um, the city of Atlanta taxpayers, uh, and just was approved last November, are dishing out $150,000 to help people who are here illegally with their legal defense. That's outrageous. There's so many low-income people in, in Atlanta, or homeless people that could be using yeah. that money. No, that Phil, is a totally wrong Phil, priority. Phil, and I, you're fostering the open pivot. borders. We have yeah. to pivot. Mm -hmm. uh, she, again, I think sometimes she steps on her own message. For example, she opened uh, what's going to be the city's biggest park, yes. the West Side Park. She did that. Uh, she unveiled her open checkbook website. Yes. Guy used to write for Creative Loafing had a funny line. He said, that's the worst name for something. Because <laughs> open, open checkbook, checkbook <laughs> could stand for government spending. <clears throat> uh, and then she said that she's going to bring back George Turner, the former uh, police chief, as public safety director. That's either an indictment of her police chief or cronyism or something. What is that? No, it's leadership. You know, and, and George Turner, you know, say what you want to say about the guy, right? I mean, when he was chief, crime was down. Crime went up. Uh, no, crime, crime was down. Uh, but this is not something that's, you know, hasn't been done before in Atlanta, okay? So let's not oh, act no, like no. this is just some, you know, idea that. that she just woke up with. This has been an effective strategy to have a commissioner of public safety, and I'm glad that it's going to be George Turner, to help work with all of the different agencies to make sure that we have a smart... But why can't the chief do that, Theron? She will continue to do that, all right? And she and she has done uh, the best that she can under the current circumstances. But, but it's a duplication, but, isn't No, it's, it's not, not a duplication. duplication. It's basically leadership, Phil. <laughs> and it's been done in other cities, it's been done in other counties, and it's worked. It's been done in places like DeKalb I'll, County. I'll give her credit. Well, DeKalb was a joke, but I'll give her credit. <laughs> that for this, with the Super Bowl coming and some other big things, yes. somebody needs an overall coordinating right. role. And George Turner, who now works for the Hawks, and by the way, good news, the Hawks are going to pay his salary for the first year, mm -hmm. so he won't enhance his pension, which many people consider illegal. It's nothing it's illegal not about his pension. It was a but study anyway, George done, Turner's okay. That's, well, that's fine. And that's and because Atlanta has is a big city that is a regional city, correct. and that's why you need that additional uh, coordination and outreach. I'm just shocked that Phil would just be criticizing, you know, a better leadership, more people trying to deal with the issue of crime in this city. I mean, every show, every week you I come on think, this show. I don't think you need you two talk, chiefs. No, it's not two chiefs. Chief. It's a it's commissioner and well, it's a chief. She's focused I know, on I the police department. If Erica Shields were uh, being frank about it, I don't think she's that happy. Okay. I hope that this works because uh, murder rate is up in this city and the shootings are up. But and this gives her an opportunity out. to focus get out. on that. We can't blame George Turner because the Hawks are paying him. <laughs> so whatever he does, it's on the Hawks, right? <laughs> All right, when we come back, a major development in transportation. Stay with us. Have a question or comment for the Georgia Gang? Visit their website at fox5atlanta.com. You know, Marta started in 1973 and 74, right? Uh-huh, something like and, that. And uh, Gwinnett and Cobb and all of them rejected it. And mm -hmm. now, this week, the Marta Board, Alexis, said, we'll do a contract with Gwinnett, Gwinnett County. Mm -hmm. There's only one variable <coughs> there. The voters have to yes, approve it do. next March. Uh huh. And I think they will. I mean, it's about time. What is that, 40-some-plus years later? Yeah. I, I can't well, I do actually, the math. I actually agree with Alexis. I think the voters will approve it in March. It, it'll be a lower turnout, and some people are wondering how that will affect things. But Gwinnett actually, I think, got a good contract out of it. Um, Gwinnett has a lot more control over the money and where it goes and where it's targeted. And, of course, we've had, as we all know, over a million people come into this region, especially uh, in Gwinnett County over the last 10 years. So. Um, I'm not surprised uh, at all. I, I think I hope our prediction comes true. It's, it's definitely a step in the right direction. And, and Marta and Gwinnett are to be complimented that they got this through. The board approved it. So now um, the messaging begins. And you got to give Chairwoman Nash uh, a lot of credit here, too, for uh, having the courage and the fortitude to see this through. And I think I'm voters. I'm just not as confident as you are that it's going to be approved by the voters mm. because it will be in March, not a general election turnout. The compromise they made. Well, one of the things that we've seen nationally, and I think it's going to play out in the governor's race, you know, you can't really poll a lot of this enthusiasm, whether it's positive or negative, towards a particular issue or a candidate. So I think that no matter who becomes a governor, there's going to be a lot going on in March, and I think that it gives Marta and Gwinnett County enough time to put together the best coalition of individuals to make sure that they get the vote out. Right. Now, I agree and with you, and if people too. realize that these projects are going to be in these various areas and it's going to be a penny tax, um, I, I agree with you. I think that could resonate uh, and, and create enthusiasm 
Mm -hmm. Now, in the real world of transportation, that is people stuck in their cars, mm -hmm. because remember, only 3% of the people around here use MARTA. Yeah. Uh, so in the real world, it was big news yesterday, Saturday, when those toll lanes opened on I-75, right. and I believe I-575 as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've driven through the construction. I haven't seen sort of the finished product. Uh, but we'll see if that that's a more of a Republican notion than a Democratic notion. It's a public-private partnership. Public-private partnerships, tolls for those who want to spend money to get someplace Variable faster. Variable tolls. Variable tolls, right. that's right. And uh, for those I of us sure ITP, hope... ITP, we don't really care. Well, I know. You, you go <laughs> ahead and ride other that, states have been ride ahead that of us. We have finally caught right. up, thanks to, to Governor Deal and, and our, our transportation folks. Uh, uh, this this um, will mitigate some congestion, and that's what we all want. So right. I think I'm glad it's finally coming I hope through. it works. I hope so, too. It'll help. Yeah, and it, it, it's a, it, it is a free market idea, so therefore I hope that it's very successful. You know, MARTA's not a free market idea, uh, but th this is because it's, there, well. there's risk and reward for the public and the private sectors. I, I don't drive enough on the south side anymore. Uh, to know how that's working, the, the lanes. Come on over there. Well, it, it is working. It's well, working it's all Henry over. Henry County and Clayton yeah. County. I and just, you know, you, you get a transponder, you get your Peach Pass, which often uh, I think can be used also in Florida. Yep. So I think it's a great it's a great thing, and it's going to be helpful. Yeah. And Governor Deal this week, uh, we're running out of time, but boy, he came out firmly for the Gulch Project, backing Richard Ressler's proposed development. Uh, he no, he well, didn't equivocate at all. Well, remember a couple weeks ago. He wants ago, that, and I, he didn't mention Amazon. And I, and I said this a few weeks ago. I said that it had bipartisan support. This was something that the governor and the business community wants. Um, and so this is the undeveloped jewel uh, in our city, and that to see the bipartisanship and the governor is to be commended, and he has a good working relationship with this mayor. And, and he sent Chris Riley, his aide, to. over to the council to talk to him about yeah, it. Yeah. Well, and time council, time. rightly so, wanted some questions answered. I think these questions are now beginning to be answered, which is which is helpful. The one the one sour note is this person, Elvin Kendall, that the mayor has put in, working for the Rec Authority in the city, and now working on the Gulch. I mean, this guy was a felon. He was imprisoned for five years. Uh, he tipped off a well, drug Phil. gang that they were going to be Phil. arrested. Why is he? Phil. Long time ago. Why is he? Phil, why is he you, now on this? You're obsessed. No, it's the conflict of interest. That There's no conflict me. of interest there, guys. And 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 you know, this is just really sad that at a time where this gentleman has served his time, has come out, has got his license restored, and is doing a good job trying to help the city move forward. And so, uh, I just yeah, think that this just a you know unfair, Why not put him unfair. Else? Why not you know, put him you're trying to defame else, this guy. Put him somewhere else. You're trying, you're trying to tarnish his character. Right, we gotta get out. He, look, and that's just really is a concern that he's representing two parts of the deal against yeah. the same entity. All right, when we come back, winners and losers. Stay with us. Time now for the week's winners and losers. And we will begin winners and losers with Theron. How about that? You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Um, my first winner is definitely going to be Nike. Uh, what they did this week about You're reading my notes. Oh, I'm sorry, but I... I <laughs> They're my loser. I, I, well, I'm going to make my winner. They showed that they're beyond sports. Uh, they put Colin Kaepernick uh, as the face of this commercial uh, that really brought to the forefront a lot of issues that are going on in this country. So they're my first winner. Now, the Falcons lost Thursday night wearing Nike jerseys, just to make that point. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not going to take that bait. Um, and then <laughs> definitely the Atlanta Open Checkbook. Um, it was a big project. Uh, I think they put two fiscal years of spending in the city of Atlanta, uh, over $2 billion um, that's there, uh, over 104 transactions. So this is a big step towards transparency. Uh, and definitely want to uh, shout out the West Side Park, which was opened by uh, the mayor this weekend as well. And then lastly, uh, there was a young lady named Carolyn Collins uh, this week. She's a custodian at Tucker High School. And Phil mentioned this earlier. She is actually working to help homeless students uh, with books and to help them be able to pay for a lot of the different things uh, so they can have a successful educational experience. All right, uh, Phil. You know, I think we might all make a winner. Um, the late Bert 
Burt Reynolds. We lost him this past week uh, at age 82, uh, the actor. Um, some of those great movies. He was the big star back in the 1970s, uh, Smokey and the Bandit, and uh, uh, so many others. In fact, when I, when I lived in Augusta, he was over there. Um, I used to see him hanging out uh, there. And of course, uh, he always claimed, even though he was born in Lansing, Michigan, he always claimed he was a Georgian. So uh, he's he's a winner. And uh, you know, the loser is that uh, gutless, cowardly op-ed writer that the uh, the New York Times, that now a disgrace to journalism, put on their op-ed page, saying all sorts of things. I don't even know if it's uh, it is fake news. I don't even know if it was written by some sort of administration. He or she's official. gutless. What the New York Times did was an abomination to the craft. That's not journalism. journalism. That is not journalism. That is not journalism. It was That's on the op -ed page. Come on. All right. I'm it's anonymous. Gonna, okay. I'm not going to deal go with ahead. that because I have other things to talk about. I want to make the mayor a winner again for the open checkbook, the park, and the ice uh, yeah. eviction. So she's a winner of my book. Also, I want to Pen Penelope McPhee and the Blank Family Foundation in their speaker series had a wonderful evening looking at the new HBO documentary on MLK and it has with it an educational component that's going to be open to the public. They've recorded 39 uh, uh, interviews and they're putting the whole interview up on the website and they've got it into a dedication to nonviolent social change. It's King wonderful. in the Wilderness. Yeah, that's the name of the documentary right. coming we're up out soon. Of time. One we'll Sunday. We're out of time. <laughs> I don't have time to do it, but hey, Nike, all out of the trash. See you next week on the Georgia Gap. Ah, uh, The opinions expressed in this broadcast are those of the panelists appearing in this program.